Senator Mark Moores is sponsoring a proposal that would ask the state to study the way we do redistricting and look at alternatives to that. Senator, thank you for being with us. Pleasure. Why do you think we need to do things differently? You know, all governments rely on being, having the support of their people. In a democracy and in a republic, we have to have faith in our processes. And the situation in New Mexico is we have politicians who have been in the legislature for years and years and decades even. And they're the ones actually going out and picking their constituents by drawing their district maps to meet what they want. We don't have a situation where the constituents and voters are able to pick their legislators. And I think that's egregious that we have that situation in New Mexico. And it doesn't lead to support of our republic and our democracy. So you're saying the way we do redistricting now allows that to happen. What could make us do it differently? What do you want to change? The way we have it now is that every 10 years, an incumbent politician is able to draw their own district and say, I want those people as my constituent, as opposed to the constituent saying, I want that person as my legislator. What we need to do is take it out of the legislator's hands for their own districts. We need to have actually be able to look at these districts that provide fair and balanced representation across the state so that people have the ability to elect their legislators instead of the legislature legislators picking their constituents. For many years now, the legislature has debated and rejected the idea of an independent commission to do this job. Is that the only way to end the practice of legislators picking their own districts? There are many ways. In fact, New Mexico is probably the one of the worst states when it comes to this. Any improvement would be better, as far as I'm concerned. There are ways to go all the way to an independent redistricting commission that's set up in our Constitution, to all the way just going back to listing what criteria we're going to do, including not caring where your, the incumbent lives. Last time we did redistricting, 10 years ago, one of the criteria is where that legislator lived. I don't care where the legislator lives. I want to have that representation for that community, for the cities, the counties, for the pueblos and the tribes, actually as the basis, not the number one criteria of where that legislator lives. One of the problems that folks have identified in the way that we do this is that our races are not very competitive. Would changes to the redistricting process introduce more competition into our elections? A democracy requires that people actually run against each other. And when you gerrymander the system so much that you don't have competitive races and people don't have a chance to run against that incumbent, we really don't have a democracy. We just have people staying in office for years and years. We have to be able to actually have these competitive races, and part of that is how we draw our districts. Representative Damon Eli has been working on proposals around the redistricting topic. Representative, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Is this primarily a partisan issue the way we've seen that in other states? I think we can start with redistricting. Setting up a redistricting commission can be partisan. I am fully committed to setting up a redistricting commission because members are literally picking their own districts and that's a conflict we should not be doing that if you do it by statute that then becomes a partisan issue because then as administrations change and parties change what we've seen around the country is the statutes change so you have to do this by constitutional amendment so that once the voters have spoken and they want a redistricting commission and then we have to do it like with the ethics commission then the partisanship hopefully gets taken out we have a fair district, and most important to me, is we remove ourselves from the conflict where we're picking our own districts, which I don't like. You want to do this by constitutional amendment. Do you think you can get enough votes to get it out to the voters? It's not in front of us this session. It, I am going, I have committed to doing that in the next session, in the 60-day session. I don't know, to be honest with you. I think so. I think as people start to see it in a fair light, I'm always optimistic, um, so maybe is the best answer I can give you. Another tough fight that went by constitutional amendment was the Ethics Commission. Right. The commission is set up, uh, people have been hired, commissioners have been appointed, um, and the issue right now is money. Right. Why has the legislature so far been reluctant to give the Ethics Commission the money that it needs in order to function? I want to be clear about this. I don't think it's the legislature. 
the, the legislature clearly passed an ethics commission. And the governor's budget, by the way, I want to say for the ethics commission, meets what the ethics commission mean, it needs. The governor's, uh, the legislative budget, the house budget, has shorted them $300,000. I have talked to everybody I can in the building that that's not going to work. We do not want the Ethics Commission, particularly a commission that's overseeing our actions, to have to get their tin cup out every year and beg for money. That's not sustainable. Just like with the redistricting, it's a conflict. So we're still early on in the process. There's going to be negotiations. But do I like right now the House budget, $900,000 instead of the $1.2 million they're asking for? No, I do not. Will I vote for the budget today to start that conversation? Yes. But when it comes down to it, they're going to have to be fully funded. And that's becoming a problem where we are passing, I think, good policy, but then we are not so good at making sure that it's financed adequately. And this is an example of that. And so I'm hopeful. We still have half the session left. There's a long period of negotiations to go through, but we have to fully fund them. You know, in other states where legislatures have seen high-profile uh, investigations by ethics commissions, they have neutralized the commissions by not funding them. Do you think this is an attempt, this reluctance is an attempt to neutralize the commission? No. The, I, what I've been hearing is there's a misunderstanding as to what the Ethics Commission's budget includes. For example, it includes a public information officer, so I think the finance people were concerned about that. But that's necessary because that public information officer is going to be responsible for setting up a website, for, set, for tracking complaints. They're setting up a new agency, so they need a technical person to be able to set that up correctly. So I think it's that kind of disconnect. I don't see anything more nefarious than that. Senator Stefanix, we've been talking about the Ethics Commission. So far, the House has not given the Commission the amount of money it's asked for. When the budget comes over here to the Senate, do you think you'll give it the extra 300000 that it's looking for? Well, I hope so. But the House Bill 2, the budget, will go to Senate Finance Committee. And I and many of the other members of the Senate don't sit on Senate Finance Committee. It does have Republicans and Democrats. It's led by Sen Senator John Arthur Smith. And there are several things from the House budget that probably will be changed to include cuts that they've made or extra projects that they put in to try to make state government whole. So that will be an opportunity for them to take the request that was 1.2 and only got 900000 in the budget and put in the extra 300000 That's about 25% of their budget. And so for a small agency, that's a lot of money. If it was a very large agency and they didn't get 300000 or they didn't get half a million or a million even, you know, they'd go, oh, shucks. But for a very small agency, that's a lot of money that they didn't get. If it doesn't get the money, does it send the message that the legislature doesn't want it to happen? I think it sends the message that the legislature still doesn't think it's important to fund. Not that it's uh, not important, period, but that it's just not important to fund yet.